Hey, welcome back to 2 DG. 2. We're about to uh, give you all a review. <laughs> I don't even know what we have. Yeah, I know it's weird. We're actually getting stuff out now. Yeah. It's suddenly on time. Um, don't forget, coming up soon, the Douches. Yeah, 2016 Douchey Awards. Second annual, baby. Boo! Uh, anyway, no, this one is uh, Death by Coconut from Oscar Blues. Uh, we did a little video on them a little while ago. Yeah. Um, this is an Irish style porter, but they brew it with coconut. Um, it's actually kind of funny on this game. Coconut, chocolate, choconut. Choconut. <laughs> Choco king. Um, but yeah, and then on the other side, pass, dash, and hit. Uh, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, uh, six and a half percent. Uh, I'm not a huge porter fan. I've been trying to drink more of them here recently, but, uh, this one, yeah, we'll see. I like good porters. Do you like <laughs> coconut? That's what's scaring me. <laughs> I'm not the biggest. I don't want it to smell like or feel like I'm drinking suntan lotion. You know? It so let's anyway. get it open. It's been a while since we had a can. Yeah, it has. Especially short, regular. Stib. I know, it's crazy. Dark beer. Yeah, is it though? <laughs> You know, we got stouty there for a while, and we still need to do that stout week. Woo. And now we're on a dark, dark porter. Uh, black, uh, appearance-wise. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of brown on the very bottom. The slightest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, nice tan head. Sticking around a little bit. It's um, a nice creamy head, too. Mm, yeah, nice tight bubbles on there. My favorite. No stickage. <laughs> well, there's some stiction. A little bit. Stiction. God, mess it up. All right. I'd say so. Let's get a nose. Which on is uh, kind of surprising in a in a porter. They're usually a little thinner bodied. An Irish porter. Well, okay. There you go. <laughs> so it's got potatoes in it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> nose it. It actually works. The you get. It's almost like a milky lacto, uh, lactose. Yes, milky lactose. <laughs> so anyway, not really, we haven't had a high. high okay. No, we just haven't done this in a while. Uh, it does have a milky lactose kind of smell to it, but it's got that coconut, which isn't overpowering. It actually blends real nice with the yeast that they use. Uh, so not that it's fake, but it does smell like an almond joy. <laughs> It does. Chocolate, like you said, milk chocolate, a little bit of lactose in there. Um, definitely coconut. By far one of the most coconut forward beers I've ever had. Yeah, but it's not it's not suntan lotion coconut. I right. Mean, this is it's actually I, I actually hope the flavors get a little bit of spice to balance that uh, coconut. I think it'd be really neat. Yeah, um, and some nice toasted malts to really round it up. Yeah, that'd be great. Alright, let's uh, <laughs> let's taste it. Initially, when it hits, there's definitely a lot of carbonation, and it explodes, and I think that, and there's a bitterness to it, too. Like, a, I don't know, well, typical porter, you know, it's got that, like a, a bite, bitterness bite to it, but then immediately, that explodes into tons of coconut, and almost on the fake coconut taste to me, and then... You get the deep roasted, uh, what the hell is that? A deep roasted malt flavor. Got an email. A little bit of sugariness to it. and uh, uh, But those two are like this. So you get the, <laughs> the, the it doesn't, they're not blended. It's, it's two separate events to me. Um, I get what you're saying about the carbonation pop up front. Coconut takes over tremendously after that, really all the way through to the back. Yeah. Um, burnt, not burnt, toasted malt flavor generally car carrying with that. Yeah. Um, it's really a two-tone flavor beer, though. Yes, um, that's what I was saying. <laughs> yeah, there, there is chocolate in there. Um, a little bit, yeah. But to me, it's all dominated by the coconut flavor. 
Um, I will say that it does marry together for me. I'm not getting the wedge thing. Layer separation. Um, <laughs> there's too many up here. Uh, it, yeah, go ahead. Um, at the end, though, it, it drops off. It's actually quite dry for... Yeah, it is. No. Excuse me, being that high in alcohol, and I don't generally get too much dry flavor from porters that much. I want to say on the second gulp, it doesn't separate as much. Uh, that first gulp, the coconut just kicks your teeth in. I mean, it takes over, and you're kind of, whoa, what happened? Because it's not the same as the smell. What happened, Tom? <laughs> what happened, Tom? Um, so then, the second gulp, it does marry better, and you do, and I think the description of an Almond Joy, or a Mounds, really works better, because it is more of a milk chocolate, and, uh, the two play together. It's definitely coconut dominant. By far. And, again, you get some of that, in my head, artificial coconut flavor, but it, but it's actually, it works once you get, once your palate gets used to being shocked by that. It actually so works real well. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I think it marries well together. It, um, it does. In that bitterness and yeast. Uh, there's almost a fruitiness to that yeast. Uh, helps to lift it around, round it on the edges. It, it really works. Alright, so uh, it is classified as porter by rape beer style. They gave it a 99. Overall, they gave it a 97. Getting splitting hairs there. Porter. Uh, to be honest, I'm going to go an eight and a half. I don't think that... Well, I think it's quality, but uh, i got to be honest. While I'm not the biggest porter fan, I like a traditional porter flavor. I just... The coconut's not doing it for me. I'll talk, but I want to challenge you to name a better porter that you've had recently. I'd have to go back through our videos. I don't know if we've done really any of them for the most part. Well, okay, let me throw this at you then. The Alaskan Smoke Porter. Definitely like it better. I don't. I do. Um, I'll go 10 for porter. Um, I don't like the style for the most part. To me, it, it's a watered-down stout, generally. No, but it's got... Well, I'm sorry. No, you're good. It's definitely got a better fruitier uh, yeast quality, though. Um, I will say I, I did drink... Uh, the Founders Porter here in the last couple of days, and it's it's good, but it doesn't to me. This one has the added, obviously the added ingredient in there, the coconut. Um, hey, they even have a ball on there. Oh, go ahead. Because it's a ball. Uh, it's not just that. Uh, anyway, uh, I like coconut. I don't feel that it's fake. Um, to me, it's it's raw shaved coconut. Um, yeah, ten for me. Uh, Overall, um, overall, let's stick eight and a half. I mean, I, I do like it and I enjoy it quite a bit. I think it is really good, but it's not. I think it's more of a specialty beer than what I think. If I want a porter, I'm not going to choose it. I want a specialty beer. I'm gonna, this is good, so I'll stick it eight and a half. Um, I'll put it at eight and a half only due to the fact that I don't choose porters. I just don't. Um. I think a lot of that comes from the fact that I've drank too many porters that say they're vanilla porters and they yeah, suck. Right. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. I really think the base of this is really good. Just take mm -hmm. the coconut out and I think it'll be a real winner. Well, um, no joke though, story time. Uh, this beer came out for the first time I think earlier this year and I could not find it. No one had it. Couldn't find it. Um, then I saw that it came out again and I wasn't trying as hard because I didn't figure it would come around here. But uh, sure enough, sitting there on the shelf, immediately picked it up. Actually, saw some of this yesterday. No, even in... Okay. Yep. Cool. All right. Um, yeah, problem is I don't like porters that much. Uh, this is a really good one, though. I enjoy the coconut, so... That's why I didn't get it. <laughs> um, interesting thing, though, you'll notice that it's Ball. A lot of you may know Ball State University, also named after Ball Corporation. Uh, did not know that. Really? Yeah. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll notice it's ball, then there's a ball, and then there's OB. Okay? Well, what you may not know is that Oscar Blues is a reseller for ball cans. And it's, if you, I don't know if you've heard of Crowlers, if you want a Crowler or a Crowler system, it's all supplied by ball, but you must order through Oscar Blues. 
Um, How about that? Well, and I think some of it has to do with quantity that you order too, but Oscar Blues is your Crowler reseller. Uh, also, fun fact, Oscar Blues was the first craft brewer to put beer in cans, and can be credited with, in my opinion, making it popular to do now. It's interesting, I watched a video the other day, and it was talking about corks and wines. Oh my god, he well, no, no, told no. me this story off camera. <laughs> no, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I did not. The, the argument is cork or screw up. Okay. And most people, when you think of screw on, screw top wine, you think of cheap garbage. Um, but the the claim is that the screw top is actually better because it doesn't allow that breathability. The other argument is it doesn't allow that breathability. It's not as good. Now, you can't get a corked wine if you don't use a cork because you're not going to grow that mold necessarily. But um, you can. But um, it's interesting because it's the same thing that we see with cans in the craft industry. Bottle or nothing. Can or nothing. I'm fine with either one. I will as say, long as the quality is good. I will say I usually supported bottles over cans for the longest time. I like I, a bottle I, better. But I don't, honestly, now. But the can, I see, that's where I'm at. The can is growing on me. And while, I don't have one right here, at least they do a full print, uh, which you can also contract. But if you were to use something like a can from, oh, by the way, did you notice that Stone now has got a canned beer? So does Stone Number One has had canned beer for a and while. Dogfish Head. Dogfish Head has a canned beer. Uh, but you'll notice that on this King Julius, it's it's a plain can with a sticker. Now, if you if any of you are my age or older, which I'm not going to tell you exactly, but yes, you, though, <laughs> type it down there. No fair if you're related. But uh, what you may notice or remember from the '70s was uh, my cousins collected beer cans. But you could get some wrapped cans that looked so awesome, and I can't wait for the day when craft beer really explodes on there. We've seen the art on the bottles. You know, we've got some killer art on the bottles. I can't wait till that's a full paint can from everybody. I mean, okay, from everyone, because as I say, Treehouse even has full. Yeah, they do, but they're not. Most of the Treehouse ones that I've seen aren't like this level of artwork. Well, no. I can't wait. Style. But, you know, I remember one of my favorite beer cans in my cousin's collection was the Steelers cans. And they were steel cans, too, by the way. So you had the little recycle steel, looked like the Steelers logo. You can get those now. You just have to get Bud Light. But it's not a cool can. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, we started to ramble. So anyway, the Oscar Blues, it's definitely good. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we got, we're going to do some trash talk coming up. I was going to do one. This viewing cycle. So I got buying hams yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Trash side, we got Stat Week coming up. We got the douche rewards coming up. Uh, we may or may not have a um, holiday special thing coming up. Uh, yeah. So it remains to be seen. Yeah. But um, we do want to do Stat Week still. We still want to do our Sour Week. Oh, God. Yeah, I forgot um, Sour Week. Okay. We want to do uh, your old names, old brand names. And I've been Speaking seeing of hams. Well, yes, exactly, and and I've seen that there's a uh, some a lot of them out of uh, Detroit. There's well, in general, there's a lot of these old supposedly recipes being resurrected and brought back. And I know there's the one out of Detroit, and I can't think of it right now. But a lot of options down the way, and I may have to do a Canadian tour. Maybe start doing some world tours. Some Molson, Molson, eh? You know, Molson. eh? Actually, no joke. Drank some Moosehead this past week or so. I drank moose bit, moose slobber. Yeah, you <laughs> crappy minded trashy faux Euro lager it sucked. But anyway. Um Yeah. Two wasn't good either. See ya.